As at the time of the recording of this message, COVID-19 has claimed the lives of over 1.1 million people all over the world. Question, do you know where this deadly disease came from? Why has it spread throughout the world? And how come that almost a year that it came into this world, scientists have still not been able to discover the remedy for this disease? But my dear friends, do you know that the word of God actually prescribes a simple remedy that you can follow to be free from this pandemic? That is what we are going to find out today in the truth that set free. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Welcome once again, my dear friend, to Truth That Set Free. This is your servant, Pastor Isaac Apple, and I believe that you have been blessed with all the messages that you know we share on this particular program god says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free the truth liberates the truth gives us freedom it gives us power over the works of the enemy so be sure that every time that we meet you join us um we are always on this station every week same time so be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to join us right here on this station if you're also watching on facebook um, remember that we come your way every week at the same time, so make sure you join us and Zoom as well. We come your way at such time and you will be blessed. Today, we are going to look into the Word of God to discover an amazing truth. Truth that will prosper your soul. I am talking about your health. Because it will surprise you to find out that God does not just care about our spiritual souls. But he cares so much about our, our physical souls as well. So much that he has actually outlined principles that would unlock the mystery of longevity and good health to everyone who follows. And in fact, it will surprise you that when we follow these principles, diseases such as COVID-19 or all of these strain diseases will never afflict us. I know you want to know, right? I know you want to be free from, from sickness. I know you want to live a life, you know, in joy without thinking about, you know, deadly diseases. That is what God desires for you as well. So be sure to stick to the very end of this message and you would be blessed by the truth that set free. If this is your first time, please be sure to click on the subscribe button on, the, on our YouTube channel right now. And make sure to click on the bell icon also. If you're on Facebook, please share it, host a watch party, and then tell others to join you as you're watching it on TV right now so that it will be a blessing to everybody as well. You know, my dear friend, nobody wants to be sick. Disease is something that we don't even want to hear about. We all do everything possible to, to avoid being sick. But unfortunately, when this year began, unexpectedly, we were struck by a pandemic that we have never had in some of us our lifetime a pandemic that has swept all over the world for the first time in my life i have witnessed my own country being locked down this is the first time that some of us are hearing words like that where governments use their executive powers to basically restrict movement where students were forbidden from going to school in fact from about i think it was about march that students were asked to stay home to this very day so many students are still in the house my kids have been in the house for so many months now why because of the outbreak of the deadly covid 19 virus where did they come from how come this disease still has no remedy how come great scientists have done everything but still they do not have remedy to this disease my dear friend god's word has a remedy to that god will show you that when you follow his principle no matter what disease takes over the world you can be free from such diseases because he is a god who cares for the prosperity of our health you see scientists you know or it is actually widely believed by scientists that 
COVID-19 is likely to have come from an animal. Yes, I know you've heard that already, so there's no news. But it is believed that this deadly disease is likely to have come from a bat. Because tests and other things done on these animals have proven that they carry viruses in that nature, the COVID-19 virus. I'm talking about the coronavirus. This is so serious because where this disease began, Wuhan in China, it is one of the places in the world where the people live on meat that are likely to be the source of coronavirus pandemic. I, I, I just want you to watch this clip and then you would understand why we believe that this virus came from Wuhan. Now, what you see on the screen right now is a market in Wuhan. It is actually one of the most popular and famous meat markets in Wuhan. Now, I just want you to look at the things that are sold there. Uh, uh, let, let me just warn you before you keep watching because the things that you may see are a, a bit disturbing to some of you. It, it is for, for our understanding to know that sometimes if we would just stick to what God says, not sometimes, but if we would stick to what God says, we will be free. So look at the market. Look at the kind of meats that are sold there. Can you see that? You see snakes being sold in the market. You see bats being sold in the market. These are animals that scientists believe, especially bats, believe to be a carrier of the coronavirus. And today, over 1.1 million people all over the world, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, uncles, loved ones, husbands, wives, have unfortunately lost their lives because man refused to follow a simple instruction of God. You see the bat being eaten by people here. This is the bat. Look at it. People eating bat. And scientists believe that this virus probably came from bat. And that's okay. Let's continue. You see, God is the one who made our bodies. If you ever visit a car manufacturer, for example, Toyota or Hyundai or, you know, um, Ghana here, we have our own manufacturer called Kantanka. I've, I've actually gone to their factory before. When you go to a car manufacturer, you see how they manufacture their car. They all have their own process that makes them unique from the other. But because they know what they want to produce, they actually, after producing the vehicle, would give you, um, um, they will give you a manual to follow. And each car has what it's supposed to be put in. Some are made to take diesel. Some are made to take gas. Some are made even to take water. Some are made to take electric. We have Tesla, which are electric powered vehicles. And many cars in our part of the world are made to run on petrol fuel. If you go and buy a car, and then your car, according to the manufacturer, was designed, the engine was designed in such a way that it can only run when it is powered by gas. And you go and then you insert, you know, petrol um, pump into the tank and you pump petrol inside. Chances are your engine will break immediately. Why? Because you have broken the law of the manufacturer and it wouldn't work. What are you saying, Pastor? The God who made us has every right to decide what we must put in the body. He knows what is right for us. He knows what will prosper us. And so when you read 3 John verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. God desires that we prosper and be in good health. And because of that desire of God, he has given us specific things that must be put inside this body. Simple as that. Just as Toyota company will design their beautiful vehicles and tell you what you must put in. They will tell you where you must go. They will tell you how to treat the engine if you want it to last long. 
If you disobey those instructions, you will not enjoy the vehicle. In the same way, when you disobey the instructions of God regarding what we must put in our body, you will not enjoy life. And so when it comes to how we treat this body, the choices we make regarding what we put inside will determine whether we are going to live healthy or we are going to live miserably. Unfortunately for some people in Wuhan, they made the wrong choice. And they ended up infecting the entire world with a disease that to this very day, human beings have not been able to discover how to deal with it effectively. Except to put on face masks, which makes even breathing very difficult. And then all the other practices. Let's continue to do them and pray that eventually it will go away. You see, not quite long ago, on Tuesday, 27th October 2015, we received a shocking news because we never expected it. It was a shock to the world, but not a shock to those who knew the original plan of God. What am I saying? On Tuesday, 27th you know, October 2015, the World Health Organization came out publicly and declared that processed meat causes cancer. Meat. They came out to declare that processed meat ranks alongside smoking as major cause of cancer. Did you get that? It's the Bible teaches that we are whole persons. God wants to save us completely, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. When you read the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, the Bible says, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Now let me just end here because we are not going to go in details in Bible prophecy now. But the angel begins by saying, fear God and give glory to him. The question is, if God desires to save us, what does it mean to give glory to God? What does the Bible say? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. The Bible says, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We were bought at a price. That means whatever we do, we must glorify God in our bodies. So what I put on and what I put in must bring glory to God. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So if I am eating, I must eat in such a way that I will glorify God. That is why God hates gluttons. Who are gluttons? Gluttons are those who eat unnecessarily. They will eat, even when their tummies are full, they will eat. Their appetite is so much that everything they will eat, whether good or bad, healthy or not, they will eat. They eat sugars, they eat fat. And before you see them, you see men with big tummies. But the Bible says, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, we must do so to glorify God. Again, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And so when it comes to us Christians, because we need to offer our bodies to God as a sacrifice, and because whatever we put inside this body must, must bring glory to God, we must avoid certain practices and certain habits that can destroy our bodies. One of them is the smoking of cigarettes. Yes, smoking of cigarettes. Smoking of marijuana, sniffing of cocaine. Some people in some part of Africa, especially young people, will sniff glue. The glue that we used to you know, fix our items when they are broken. They put glue in a bottle and they will sniff it. Anything that we smoke or sniff or we take in, that causes the body to feel some kind of high. It's very dangerous to the body. We cannot bring glory to God if we do that. Why? Because it is believed that every cigarette that you smoke takes about 14.5 minutes of your life. So imagine how many cigarettes have you smoking. Multiply them by 14.5 and know the number of days, months, or years you've taken off your life. Research done by Beckman Institute, it says it is estimated that cigarette smoking kills over 1 million people each year. God says, my desire is that you prosper in health and live healthy. 
Why would God allow you to smoke when you know that this thing will kill you? Again, another research done in the United Kingdom says that smoking is the single biggest cause of cancer in the world. Tobacco smoke contains 70 different cancer-causing substances. In fact, it says smokers have 25% higher risk of heart attack than non-smokers. Why? Because the nicotine in the smoke actually causes the arteries to shrink. The arteries are what carries blood into your different parts of the body, especially the heart. When the arteries become small, it becomes very difficult for your heart to pump them, and you would have different forms of heart problems. So as Christians, we need to stay away from smoking. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, To him who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. So my dear friend, today you need to overcome that habit. A habit that can destroy the physical temple of God, which is your body, is something that is out of place for a child of God. I don't know what you've been sniffing. I don't know what you've been smoking. But cigarette smoking is against the teachings of the Bible. You cannot find the word cigarette in the Bible. But there are principles that are clear, and that's what we have just said, that are so clear that a child of God must not smoke. So if you are addicted to any of this stuff, in our previous message we talked about you know, alcohol addiction and how to overcome it. If you miss it, please be sure to go to our YouTube page or to go to our Facebook page and check that message out, okay? And then it will be a blessing to you. You also find out how you can quit some of these addictions, including cigarettes. So as a Christian, you must do everything you can to avoid putting substances in the body that can lead to your death because that is not the plan of God for your life. Okay, you must quit because when you quit, God will bless you. In Romans chapter 5, verse 20, it says that, But where sin abounded, grace abounded more. It doesn't matter if you are a smoker today, Jesus still loves you. That is the beauty of it. He loves you, but He hates what you are doing. And He expects that today you overcome that sin and live a victorious Christian life for Him today. God bless you for accepting to do that. Now let's continue. Understand that today's message is about understanding the principles of God for our health. And it will surprise you that in God's principle, when we follow, even COVID-19 cannot affect a child of God. That is so amazing. It is so powerful. God's word is so clear and true. In fact, when you read Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, God made a very powerful statement there. He said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes. He says, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. A lot of people will say, oh, Jehovah is my God. He is the God who heals me. But before God becomes your healer, he said, if you would diligently obey my word, and keep my commandments and do all the things that I have instructed you to do in my word, then I become the God who heals you. His name is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who heals us. But he requires that we keep his commandment. God said this to the Israelites when they were coming out of slavery in Egypt. He said, if you do what I'm telling you, none of the diseases, that came upon the Egyptians, you will never suffer them. And later on, when King David was reflecting on what God did for the Israelites, in Psalm 105, verse 37, David said, And there was none feeble among his tribes. This is so amazing. None of the Jewish people suffered any of the disease that the, the Egyptians were suffering from. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear that even when the Israelites were still slaves in Egypt, when the women got pregnant, because they had followed the instructions of God, they were so strong that they, need, they needed not even to go to the hospitals to deliver. They would just deliver in the house with no pain. That is what God can do for you. But this begins with obedience. So the question is, what were some of the diseases that the 
Egyptians were suffering from. Well, listen, studies done on Egyptian mummies. Egyptian mummies are, you know, the dead remains of the kings of Egypt, you know, the pharaohs. When they died, they buried them, they, they, they actually embalmed the body, which means they, they, they rub certain substances or certain ointment on the body so that the body doesn't go bad. So these corpses or these bodies are laid in the tombs. That is a pyramid anyway. Now, studies done on some of the mummies, in fact, reveal that these dead kings of Egypt died from some of the common diseases that people die from today. Hmm. In fact, it is believed that one of the most famous pharaohs of Egypt, that same pharaoh who was there when Moses finally came back to take the people of God from bondage, that is Ramses the second. It is believed that Ramsey himself died of heart attack after studies were done on his remains. And this research came out from the work of Dr. Rosel David from Manchester University, Manchester in England. Again, according to Dr. Claudia Raffis, this doctor discovered after doing so many x-rays on the remains of Egyptian pharaohs, he found out that these pharaohs died from diseases like heart attack, cancer, arthritis, obesity, high blood pressure, romanticism, sexually transmitted disease, and all forms of disease that is killing people today. Why were the Egyptians suffering from these diseases? And why the Israelites were not suffering from the same disease, even though they were there? Simple. The Israelites were following the principles of God when it comes to their health. But the Egyptians were not. But the question again is, what has the health principles of God in the Bible got to do with what I eat? Is there any relation? Well, let me take you back to the beginning. Because whatever you want to find out in the bible you always have to go to the beginning how was it done before sin because that is the ideal life that is the original intent sin is a disruption that is why god would deal with it and restore this world back to how it was in eden okay so in the beginning according to genesis chapter 1 verse 29 the bible said and god said see i have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be food simple as that so the original diet of man just like toyota will manufacture or you know hyundai will manufacture their car and determine what um fuel it should use the original diet of mankind as god created us was vegetarian diet did you get that it was a diet that was made up of nuts and grains. That was man's food. Man was not originally created to eat meat. Please follow this. It is very, very important. Now, let's continue. You see, when God finally destroyed this world after sin, you know, took over the world during the days of Noah, God, before the destruction, gave Noah certain instructions. And this is what I want you to follow. Understand the original diet of man did not consist of animal-based product. The original diet of man was basically grains and nuts and seeds, as the Bible just said in Genesis 1.29. But when sin took over the world, God had to destroy everything. So God called Noah. Noah preached for so many years, but nobody listened to Noah. And Noah and his family were the only one who entered the ark. But God gave him instruction that he should allow some animals to enter. Now listen, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, this is very, very important because a lot of people don't get this from the beginning. And they think that this is some kind of a doctrine. This is very, very important Bible teaching for you and I. So that you don't die early and you live and enjoy your life. God says in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, and a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. So God was specific. He said, The animals that you should allow into the ark, this is how it should be. When you take the clean animals, make sure they are seven each, male and female, seven each. Those that are not clean, 
you should take two into the ark. Why did God do that? Why did God allow Noah to take seven clean animals and only two of the unclean? You see, you'll find that very soon. You see, when God sends the rains to come, the rains destroyed everything. When I say everything, everything, the whole world was wiped. It's just like clicking the factory reset on your phone. It wipes it, everything is off. When the rains finally went off and the waters receded, there were no more plants. There were no trees. There were no grains. There were no vegetables. Everything was gone. They had to start life again. It was there that God introduced meat into man's diet. But before God introduced meat into man's diet, because he is our creator, he determined which animal must be put in the body and which must not be put in the body. This is not for the Jews, so this is for God's people. Because when this instruction came, listen, they were not Jews. No one lived before the Jews. It was later that Jacob gave birth to the 12 sons of Jacob who became the, the, the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. That was when the Jewish nation was formed. Many, many years later. So this was not for the Jews. This was for God's people. For the children of God. If you were a child of God, this is for you. So which are the animals that God classifies as clean? And which of them does he classify as unclean? Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 14. We are reading from verses 6 to verse 8. It says, And you shall eat every animal with cloven hoofs, having the hoof split into two. Okay? And that chews the cord among the animals. So any animals that has a cloven hoof, that is, we normally call it the, the, the shoe. If you see a goat, the, the shoe, all right? When it is divided into two, that animal, according to God's classification, is good for your health. If it chews the cord, you see, when sheep and goats, when they eat and they lie down, you realize that as they lie down, they bring back the food into their mouths and begin to chew again. Any animal that does that, according to God, is good for you. And today, scientists have actually proven that animals that do that are good for our system because of the way they are able to digest their meals. They are good for our system, but animals that do not do that are bad for our systems. Again, he continues to say, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 2 to 8, Nevertheless, of those that chew the cord or have cloven hoofs, you shall not eat. So, I hope you understand. So, if the animal has a cloven hoof but does not chew the cord, the Bible says it's not good. If it chews the cord and does not have a divided hoof, the Bible says it's not good. So, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 2 to 8, it gives specific example. It says, the camel, the hare, and the rock hyrax, for they chew the cart, but they do not have cloven hoops. They are unclean for you. He continued to say, also the swine is unclean for you. You know, swine is pig. It's unclean for you because it has cloven hoops, yet does not chew the cart. You shall not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcass. Have you ever seen a pig before? Pigs are one of the most dirtiest animals in the world. Pigs have been made by God in such a way that they are able to absorb any poison unharmed. In fact, tests show that when a snake is bitten by, you know, a black mamba, black mamba is one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. When you are bitten by a black mamba, you will die within a few minutes. But pigs can take the bite of a black mamba and still live. Why? Because beneath the skin is a huge layer of fat that is able to absorb the poisons and they will go on unharmed so one of the animals that snakes actually fear are pigs they will eat you up quickly so god says though they have you know clothing hoops they don't chew the cord so they are not good for you somebody will say pastor but you know bacon is so sweet pork meat is so sweet why would god do that it's salvation by eating and drinking this didn't jesus christ come to die and cleanse all of us point of correction Christ came to save human beings who are sinners. Christ's death should never, be, should never re be reduced to the level of dying for animals for you and I to eat. No. He came to cleanse us from our sin, not to cleanse animals for you to eat. That is wrong. Remember that in the Garden of Eden, 
what led the whole world into sin had to do with what we eat. Adam and his wife ate something that God says do not eat. So don't think that, oh, if I just eat pork, what will happen to me? Wouldn't God forgive me? God still punished Adam and Eve for eating just a single apple. So don't try to think that if we disobey God's instruction, it will be well for us. In Psalm 84 verse 11, God says, No good thing would he withhold from those who walk uprightly. If pork is good, God will let you eat it. Mm -hmm. You see, pork is the highest cholesterol source of all meat. And we know this, we don't even need to be a Christian. Even when the people know that cholesterol is bad for you. Things that contain a lot of fat are very bad for you. Pork has the highest fat content of all meat. According to Dr. McNaught, he found out that one of every four pork spacemen had living trachnea liver in it. Now, this trachnea liver, they are actually worms that grow inside the meat of a pork. Scientists believe no matter how much you cook it, chances are some of these worms can survive and they will find themselves in your bloodstream and they will begin to multiply and grow in different parts of your body. This is so serious. A woman had a, a, a severe pain in the head. She reported to the hospital. They did give certain painkillers. It, it was not going down. So they had to do a scan. And the scan revealed that there was a worm growing in her brain. Later, they found out that the worm got into her system because she ate pig meat. You can see that. This is so serious. Why would God allow us to go through this? Is he not a loving God? He made us. He knows what is good. God made a man. He also made a pig. He knows what is good for the man and he knows what is good for the pork. He did not create the pork to be eaten. Pork, pigs have their role in the world. We need to be careful. There is a very serious statement in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 to 17. Listen, the Bible says, For behold, the Lord would come with fire, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go in, to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Don't follow unnecessary appetite. Some people unfortunately did that. And see what we are suffering from COVID-19. Don't follow unnecessary appetite. God instructs us to stay away from things that will harm us. Okay. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 19, the word of God says, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame. We need to fight any appetite that will cause us to make our stomachs like God's to us. We spend all time and energy fighting for food, eating anything, any time we eat. Some people would spend the entire day eating. Even at night when they are about to sleep, when doctors have even told us that it is not good to eat heavy meals, they will eat and say, after what? We are destroying the temple of God. Food or meat that contains high level of fat, that contains a lot of fat, are not good for you and I. That is why the World Health Organization has even come to declare that meats that are processed you know even the clean ones that are highly processed contains chemicals that are artificial today because of the greed of man we put so many chemicals in the meat so much that they become cancer causing agents do you know why there's so many cancer there's a high rate of cancer in the world check what we are eating today today basically the food that we eat they are not food anymore they are about 80 percent artificial you know additives things that are added to make it just taste so good they are not food and these are the things that are causing a lot of disease we have deviated from what god created us to eat to things that would only you know be sweet in our mouths we need to fight that he continued to say in philippians chapter 3 verse 19 who set their mind on earthly things you see you are what you eat if you eat good you will live good and i'm so happy that these days a lot of people have actually become health conscious. 
This is no more like a Bible message anymore. A lot of people have become health conscious. In Ghana here, many people are now going back to the original diet. People are now eating more greens, more vegetables, you know. People are staying away from oils. We are now going back to coconut oil. We are now going back to palm kernel oil. And all these, you know, foreign oils that are nothing but fat and cancer-causing agents, people are now staying away from. All right, so now that we have identified the kind of meat that God has given us instruction, which one to eat and which one not to eat, let's go into the sea. What about the fish? What kind of fish should we eat? Is there any instructions regarding the kind of fish we should consume according to God? Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 9, the Bible says, This you may eat of all that are in the waters. You may eat all that have fins and scales. In verse 10, it says, And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat it. It is unclean for you. <laughs> this is so amazing. And it's so easy to find because when you go to the seaside or you go to where they fish for fish, you would actually know which fish have fins and those ones that have scales. The ones that have scales are the ones that are good for you and I. Those ones that don't have scales, the Bible says, no, it is not good. It's not that God doesn't want you to have fish to eat. He wants you to be healthy. This is so simple. And Jesus Christ did not come to die for fish. No, the blood of Jesus does not clean fish. It cleanses sin. What kind of sin have fishes caused? They have no sin. They are innocent. We have sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned. It didn't say for all humans and animals. God sent his son to die for us, not for fish. So that a fish that was unclean now is clean because Jesus has cleansed it with his blood. No, 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 no. The blood of Jesus should not be reduced to that level. Okay. So it says, if the fish does not have fins, do not eat it. But if it has fins and it can... It has scales on them. You should eat it. You see, according to Dr. Bruce um, Halstead, who is a marine biologist, he actually discovered something so amazing. And that is, he discovered that the fish that have fins and scales are able to swim deeper. Now, because they swim deeper, they, their fins and scales protect them from viruses, from bacteria, and from all forms of infection that are found deeper in the sea and all water bodies. But those that do not have fins, when they go deeper, they are easily affected by those, you know, bacteria and stuff like that. So when you eat of them, you are able to or you are likely to contract diseases that they get. But once you have the scales and you take the fish and you remove the scale, you are basically taking away everything that can affect you. God is so wonderful. He did that for you and I. He does not want you to die. He wants you to live. He wants you to live and prosper in health. Why do you want to disregard it and say that Christ has cleansed it for you to eat? No, 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 no. That is not what God did. He has given us instructions regarding what we should eat. In verse 10 of Deuteronomy chapter 14, he continues to say, And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat it. It is unclean for you. So, some of these shellfishes, you know, shrimps and all those ones, they are dangerous for you. We should stay away from them, okay? Uh, go to expensive restaurants and you look at the menu and then the seafood section. You see lobsters, you see shrimps, you see all these stuff. They, they may taste so good, but they are actually dangerous. Why? Because God says so. And scientists today have actually done a lot of research and they've concluded that they are not good. But you see, the reason why they keep eating is because of disobedience. You see a doctor who knows that nicotine in cigarettes can actually cause cancer and he'll still smoke. That is disobedience. So don't be, be, be deceived by the fact that even those who know are still eating it. This is an important health principle for you and I. God wants you to enjoy your life. You are married. He wants you to grow and see your children growing and see your grandchildren, and see your great-grandchildren. And it can be possible if you eat what he has told you to eat, and don't become a glutton and live by your stomach. People live by stomach direction. Wherever their stomach tells them to go, that's where they go. They eat basically anything. At the night, they are eating. Morning, they are eating. Afternoon, they are eating. They are chewing meat, everything. Any hour of the day, they are eating. And they end up with obesity and all forms of heart diseases because they are not careful. 
But someone is asking, Pastor, I don't believe what you are saying. Because Peter had a vision and God told him that he has cleansed all meat. Is that what the Bible really says? Let's go to that vision. It is found in Acts chapter 10. If you have your Bible, please open with me. This is very, very important because a lot of people always take this test out of context and miss the purpose of that vision itself. Okay. In Acts chapter 10, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Remember that Peter was a disciple of Jesus. He had worked with Jesus for at least three years. And so throughout his time with Jesus, if Peter later on when Jesus was no more in the world, was saying that I have never eaten anything unclean, then it stands to reason that Peter never ate any unclean meat or food with Jesus Christ. There was a time that Jesus Christ was with his disciples and the Jews had a ritual way of washing their hands, okay? They had to wash their hands ritually before they eat. Jesus and his disciples were eating and they did not do that. And then the, 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 the Pharisees accused Jesus and his disciples for not doing that. And Jesus Christ said, it's not what goes into your body that makes you unclean, but what comes out. And people say, oh, that means Jesus Christ was even condemning this message on clean and unclean so you can eat anyhow. It's not what goes inside you. You see, it was not about food because what they were eating was not unclean. Otherwise, Peter would never have said that I've never eaten anything unclean before because Peter was there. I hope you understand now. It had to do with a ritual cleansing. The Pharisees believed that if you don't wash your hands ritually and you eat, you, you become unclean. And Christ said, no, no, no. The attitude in your heart. This was nothing to do with eating or the health messages, but spiritual cleanliness. Your own attitude, you, you, you claim to be a Christian, yet you hate somebody. That is, that is the thing that is coming out of your heart. Christ was trying to let the Pharisees know that even though they, they are seen as the leaders of the church, they are hypocrites. That is why at one point he says, you hypocrites, you appear like whitewashed tombs, but inwardly you are full of dead men's bones. So that message there had nothing to do with meat. Let's get back to Peter. Peter said, Lord, you know I've never eaten anything unclean. When Peter said that, it did not take long when he had a knock. When he went back to check, there were men from a famous Roman soldier, a centurion, who had been sent to come and fetch Peter. You know, in those days, the Jews were forbidden from having any form of contact with the Gentiles. It was considered to be unclean for a Jew to even go to the house of a Gentile. A Gentile is those who did not believe in God. They were idol worshippers. It was considered unclean. Okay. But Cornelius sent for Peter. And, and Peter resisted, but he had to go. When he went, listen to what he said. When he met Cornelius, verse 28 of Acts chapter 10, it says, But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So you see where the vision is. God used what Peter understood to explain to him what he should do. He used clean and unclean animals to tell Peter that I have cleansed man, not animals. Because, listen, what he saw was not about the, the meat. It was about the man. That is why we did not read anywhere in the Bible that later on Peter started eating those animals. It was a vision. It was not a reality. It was a vision. And so when he woke up from the vision, he heard a message that there were two people who were Gentiles, who were unclean, who were looking for him. He went to his house and said, look, Mr. Cornelius, you know that I should not be here, but God called me to be here. Right? Because when the message came, later God also revealed to Peter that he should go. So God called me to be here. Later, when Peter delivered the God's word to the Cornelius and his household, they received the Holy Spirit. They began to speak a new language and they were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The other apostles heard and they were furious. Why do you have to go to a Gentile as Peter? Then Peter said, you know, God has shown me 
How did he see it? In a vision. He said, God has shown me that I should not call any man unclean or common. So the vision of Peter in Acts 10 is about people who were called unclean, not about meat. Don't take the advantage of that and go and eat anything that will lead to your own death. No. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, listen to what happened again. Peter said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but has set men from every, na every nation who fear him and do what is right. Did Peter say that I now know that God says he has cleansed animals we should eat? No. Peter understood the vision. We are here misunderstanding the vision. He has explained it that, okay, now I understand that God says I should not call any man unclean. He was able to know that God was not telling him to go and eat unclean animals. That is the message. God loves us. And he wants us to live and enjoy life. If we follow the head principles of God, oh, my dear friend, we will live healthy. COVID-19 is here with us. Follow what God is saying. Eat what he has instructed you to eat. Avoid unnecessary eating. Fats and all those things that have been highly processed, they are bad for you. You know what? I want to recommend to you, if you can begin changing your diet and doing away with unclean stuff according to the Bible, and even those ones that are clean, if you can begin to reduce it because, you see, Today, the greed of men has caused man to infect even clean animals with poisons. Gone are the days. Chicken would actually take so many men to grow on their own. These days, you go to the industrial areas, you go to the factories where chicken are raised up. It is so sad. It is so sad. The chicken do not even see daylight. They are treated as product from when they are hatched to an enclosed area where they are fed, to where they are slaughtered by machines. And they are injected with so much antibiotics that when you eat the chicken, you become antibiotic resistant. You see, when you, the moment your body begins to resist antibiotics, you are doomed. That is your end. And a lot of the meats that we are eating from these factories are processed with so much antibiotics because they want them to grow quickly within some few days they are ready to be sold and men and women are just super hungry to eat some of these things no matter what we look at how sausages and some of these things are processed i'm not spoiling your diet but i'm just telling you the truth because i love you and god loves you the most and he wants you to live long you see how some of these you know sausages are processed a whole pork or a whole pig is thrown into the machine and with his blood, bones, skin, everything is mixed together. And then we have these sausages. Chickens are thrown into the machine with their feathers, everything. They are processed and then we eat them. No wonder World Health Organization was able to come out to tell us that even processed food can cause cancer. It is not that chicken can cause cancer. No. But because of how it is processed, how cow meat is processed, the process it goes through, it makes it artificial. So why don't you go back to the word of God and then do it as God wants you to do it. Don't let your appetite lead you to your grave. Many people have died and those deaths could have been prevented if only they were eaten right. Former President of the United States, um, Bill Clinton, nearly died from heart attack. And he confessed that his diet was poor. He was eating all forms of junk meals, from pizza to Coca-Cola to all those junk meals. He was eating them. When he survived from, you know, the near-death heart attack, he went through several open-heart surgeries. Now, this man is a vegetarian. He doesn't take in meat. He doesn't take in any of these fatty ass stuff. He doesn't take in all these sugary um, foods and these so-called soft drinks, which are nothing but hard drinks because they contain high doses of sugar, which are destroying our system. He stopped that. And now he's so old, but he's still alive. Many people are going, you know, the way of health reforms, taking in good meals, taking in 
correct dosages and drinking what is good for them. Let me advise you, if you want to live long, avoid things that contain high doses of sugar. In fact, even Coca-Cola company themselves have come out publicly to say that if you want to avoid obesity, don't drink Coke. They have said it. It is everywhere. Go to their website. It's there. They have said it plainly that Coca-Cola is not good for those who want to live healthy because it contains so much sugar, and that is not good for you. Your system doesn't need that. It causes your body to be full of acid. The body needs to be alkaline in order for you to live healthy. But when we take in sugar, when we take in all these junk meals, some people think that when you are rich, you should be buying pizza. That is one way of destroying your own health. Eat the greens, eat the vegetables, eat at the right proportion, and you will, you will live for long, healthy life. Okay? Don't let the enemy deceive you. When COVID-19 came and everybody was confused about what to do, God's word led us to know a simple way of living. And a lot of people started, in fact, it even became a trend on social media in Ghana, where people would go for neem tree, put it in hot water, boil it, and after that, take the entire pot, you know, you sit be, be, before it, then, then you cover yourself with blankets under the neem tree, you stir it, and then as you steam, you take in the steam. It is good for taking care of all forms of infection. And in fact, it came out, I'm not, I, did not, I don't know how authentic it is though, but it came out that people in China started getting themselves healed from COVID-19 when they started doing that. These are simple remedies from nature. At the time that God's people, we focus on the word of God. At the time that God's people, we avoid things that will destroy the temple of God, which is our body. Anything that is so sweet, let us not follow this flavor. Let us understand that it can destroy our body. It is time that as God's people will go back to the way it was. Go back to the original diet. Go back to food that will help us. Remember your, 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 your appetite can destroy you. Don't follow your appetite and become a glutton. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He did not die for meat. This message is not some message that is some, by some check. Don't eat this, don't eat that. Some people say, well, no, as for you people, you always don't this, don't do that. It is not for these people. It is from God. I did not quote from any church doctrine. I quoted from the Bible. And for your health, and for my health. I know a man who, who was diagnosed with stomach cancer, you know, at an advanced stage. If you check statistics on stomach cancer, very few people survive. Because stomach cancer is mostly diagnosed when it is very late. But this man never went through chemotherapy. He never went through any of these painful and deadly remedies. He only changed his diet. Went back to the original diet. And he was totally, completely healed from his stomach cancer. I knew a man who was suffering from, you know, liver issues. He had inflammation of the liver. His stomach started bloating. He was on the verge of dying. He was declared useless. He changed his diet and ate the right food and he was completely healed god loves you god cares for you he wants to save you so today you have heard the truth he says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free why don't you make a pledge that you will preserve the temple of god which is your body by doing what is right and eating what is right anything god says no you to say no to it if he says yes eat it Eat in moderation, exercise, take sunlight, and then make sure you rest. You rest. And I love it. That is why God, realizing that the time will come, that man will be so busy with, you know, shadows and stuff like that, give us six days to work. And then the seventh day, we should rest. Rest is good for your soul. Everybody will tell you, sleep well. Don't spend four hours from 10 p.m., to somewhere like 3 a.m. browsing Facebook. That is unhealthy for your body. Sleep well. Sleep in a comfortable position. Eat well. Drink a lot of water so that your brain will be well. Your body will be well. Eat only food that is good for you. And listen, you will live to enjoy life.
Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10, verse 10, The enemy came to steal, destroy, and to kill, but I have come to give you life and life in abundance. You may say, Pastor, it's difficult for me. I've, I've, I was basically raised on some of these faults. Today, you can overcome. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why don't you begin today? Surrender to God and ask Him to help you. If this message has been a blessing to you today, please share it with somebody. It will save somebody physically from harming him or herself. If you have any question, you can just send a question to our WhatsApp number on the screen or you can just put it on the Facebook um, you know, page right now and then we will get back to you. May God bless you. May God equip you with every knowledge that will help you to live a better life because God desires that in this world you should enjoy yourself and live healthy. If you desire to support this program, you know, financially, our mobile money number is on the screen. You can give us, you can, whatever donation that God impresses upon your heart so that we can continue to produce more content, share it on every social media handle, play it on every TV station. Do so and the Lord will bless you. Remember, you are what you eat. Eat what God has prescribed for you and you will enjoy life. As always, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Shalom.